Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome to another part in me doing a DIY paint and body work in my garage. And what I was gonna do in this video and what I'm really gonna do are now two wildly different things because I just found out yesterday that I'm not staying here, I'm moving to Texas. And that's about 2,000 miles away. I just spent 500 bucks at the paint shop. So what I was gonna do was uh, spray this with a 2K high bill primer and then I was gonna start block sanding and check out all the body work I did on the last couple of videos and get everything nice and smooth and take my time and see if I could build a paint booth in here. But I might be leaving next month and that's just a couple of weeks away and I just don't have time. I got way too much going on. So now the plan is I'm going to sand down the hood and spray it with this 2K sealer Put the car back together enough that the auto transport can deal with it and get back to it when I can. I went ahead and put the hood back on it. So the plan now is I'm just going to sand the hood all down. And then I'm going to, I got to do a little bit of spot sanding up in the back corners a little bit. You might be able to kind of see that. That doesn't look all that great. Um, I'll probably have to get back into that. And I'm just going to uh, spray it. Just the outside of the car. I'm not going, I'm not doing the door jams because I haven't sanded those yet. I'm not doing it under the trunk lid or under the hood or any of that stuff I was really planning on doing because I'm just going to have to get to that um, later down in Texas when I get set up. And I have no idea when that's going to be right now. So let's see what Santa Claus brought us. And when I mean Santa Claus, I mean Bob's paint place down in Vancouver. Since this is literally my first rodeo and I have no idea what I'm doing. I went online, looked around, looked like 2K primer or no 2K sealer was what I wanted to do. And so I went down to, the, to Bob's paint place and threw myself on the mercy of the court and they were fantastic. They hooked me up with everything I need plus extra. So $500 later, let's see what the, let's see what I got. This uh, seems to be extra absorbent towels to help clean and wipe things off. I didn't need those. This is a disposable medium size dual cartridge paint mask. Definitely need that. Uh, I picked up a roll of uh, paper to help mask things off. I've also got some wrapping paper I will plan on use. Uh, this is the data sheets for the paint that I got and the, so, I, so I know what, what ratios I need to mix. Uh, they threw a couple of these things, spray gun cleaner. I don't know if I needed three cans. But I got them. And uh, of course, two rolls of tape. I've got plenty, but I wasn't arguing with them. Uh, tack cloths. Okay. Use that for the final cleaning. Well, what else do we got here? We got undercoat hardener. So this is what you mix with the shop line 2K urethane sealer gray. They were specifically asking me what color I wanted because the color of the of this can kind of build up and make a difference in the color of the output apparently. I told them it didn't matter. I'm probably going to end up sanding it all off anyway. And in the future, I do want to do a high build primer so I can really level out the car. So gray it is. Um, prep all wax and grease remover. Definitely, I specifically asked for this um, because I didn't do this before I sanded the car. And so what I understand is that you can actually push that stuff down into the paint. So I'm going to wash and definitely go over this and then follow it with a tack cloth. I've got, I actually picked this up from Mint Depot. This is a plastic drop cloth that I will hang around to try to minimize the disaster. I've got nice filters. I've got plenty of stir sticks. They, uh, Brew a nice amount, and then I've got two mixing cups. That, and I've got a Harbor Freight spray gun, and I've got another Craftsman spray gun. I will pick one and see what I can do. So my first task is I'm going to grab the sander, not tonight, tomorrow, and I'm going to sand all that down, and I've been debating if I should just go ahead and start masking off the, the windows now. I mean, i got to do them sometime, but I think I'll wait because once I get it sanded, I might actually just go out and actually wash the car with some uh, good detergent and then chase it all up and wipe it down with the wax and grease remover to make sure it's really good and off. So I'll probably end up putting the car cover on that and sanding this down, getting the rest of it, and then getting serious about the rest. All right, got some sanding done. Apologize if the sound is bad, but I'm yelling through my mask. I don't want to take it off yet. I don't know what this stuff is. This hood did not come with the car. So like the red on the roof in the back, 
is not the same as this red and this is like farm implement red or something i've gone all the way down to 80 grit and i'm still having trouble cutting the shine out and getting down something i can use i've been spending some time here i had little rust spots and paint gouges from people dragging things i got maybe a slight dent there i'm just trying to cut all that out for a seal it. i still got a little bit more and you can see see where i missed see that's not that's still got a nice glaze to it i wanted to show you i found a bondo area and uh it was cracked so i knew something was going on the more i sanded it down the more i'm finding some like surface rust or something going on underneath it and that's causing it to crack Let's see if you can see that and so i'm going to peel that up and get all that rust out i don't i don't have time to fix it i would love to put a skim coat on it and do something about it I'm just out of time, so I'm gonna chip that up. I might have to hand sand it to get it all out. I'm not sure yet, and I'll continue on. See if I can dig some of this out. Yeah, look at that nasty stuff right under it. That's that's what's causing the bond of the lift and the, and the crack, and uh, that might be a uh, that might be a bigger mess than I thought, but well, I'm gonna put on a fresh uh Fresh shade of sandpaper on my DA and get back to it. Well, it's worse than I thought. It's uh, it's actually a hole. Instead of fixing it or welding it up, they just put uh, this stuff all over it. So I think what happened is moisture came up from down below and started working its way up under the filler and that's what caused it to lift. So I'm gonna clean that all up. I really should be welding that up or patch paneling that smooth out working on it i just don't have time so i am simply going to uh just clean it up and spray it and it kills me to do that but i, I just don't have time to mess with it well i've got the hood as sanded as i want i went at it with 80 grit i had to peel up some of that filler in that one area where i found the hole which i'll show you again and i found some other crack paint here and there and I really, I, I'm actually regretting doing this. I should have just left it as is, sealed the rest of the car, and just plopped the hood on. Because I'm going to end up sealing the hood now, but I'm going to have to go right back into it. Because I've got a metal repair on that, and there's other places where the, where the paint has actually separated and cracked. And I'm going to have to get into that. So I'm thinking once I get down into Texas and get set up in my new place, I'm just going to end up, uh, I might just take a paint stripper to it, strip down the entire hood, and see what I really have under there. Because I really don't want to do this three times. And once again, I have no idea what they painted this with, but man, 80 grit barely touched it. It is some tough stuff. Well, here's a little bit more of that hole. I don't know what the heck caused that. And I tried to get underneath and kind of push it up a little bit. And I thought, well, maybe I can smooth out. But I thought, why bother? Because really, I'm going to take and cut out this whole section here and just weld in a new piece. I'm not going to mess with that. So that's in the future. I've got some slight paint cracking here and i've got some more over there and so really i gotta take this down to metal and start all over so i'm just bleh. i'm just gonna spray sealer on it it'll get me down there in case it gets caught in the rain or bad weather during the auto transport or whatever else i gotta deal with and i'll probably just end up starting all over when i when i can but as for now I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to uh, figure out, wash it all off. I think I'm going to use some Dawn detergent mix, according to the internet. And then I'll bring it back in here and start heating it up, back up and drying it off. Well, I got the car all washed and uh, I've been having it in the garage for the last couple hours. I've got the fans on it, dried it off. And I think at this point now, where I can go ahead and start uh, washing everything up. <laughs> My neighbor saw that was crazy. I'm out there. It's 40 degrees and it's just raining. just coming down has for hours. And I'm out there washing the car. But I went over it twice, uh, dried it off really good. Now, if I was painting it, I'd be up in the door jams. I'd be doing a lot better job of this. But I'm just sealing it so I can transfer it to Texas. So now I'm going to start masking it and uh, figure out how I'm going to set up a paint booth really quick and dirty. All right. I think I got it all masked up. It's a less than an ideal situation. But I did... Uh, I actually had to wrap that pole up there because I don't have a lot of room between there and the fender. I just don't have time to do something better. I also removed the worst of the farm implements off the wall. You know, anything that could cut my neck off from the back, I got rid of. And what I'm going to do now is wipe it all down with the tack rag and the cleaner, the prep all, and get ready to actually spray. I've got to get it sprayed today with my timeline. And I'm also going to set up the uh, heater that I put together or got going in an earlier video because it's still like 42 degrees outside and wet. And so I want warm 
pressured air to blow in here and then I'll just crack the garage door and blow it out all over the neighborhood. But with it being rain, that actually kind of helps me out. So the HOA doesn't have a snit at me. But anyway, I'm going to get on to the, that point. Okay, the car is as cleaned off as it's ever going to be. I'm still going to do a final tack rag on it, but right before I'm ready. And I've got my paint stuff all set up. And I even got my gun. And I've got my uh, heater uh, for you know fresh air coming in and uh, heated air. And this is not how I wanted to do this, but let me walk you through my setup. Okay, I'll be first to admit that this is uh, pretty lame. I'm going to uh, turn it on, get the heat going. I'll put the uh, lid on it to seal it up and then I'll use this blanket and that piece of cardboard to get everything sealed up and I've just got a, a filter on the air inlet and that should hopefully give me some fresh somewhat clean air coming into the garage that's also heated up I've got the uh, garage door already cracked and the idea is to not totally stink myself out I didn't I just don't have time to uh, set up a good proper paint booth and so I'm just gonna hope for the best now the paint gun, this is the Harbor Freight Special. And I went up on, there's a YouTube channel called Paint Society, and he uh, lines you up how to set this up. Basically you crank that all the way up, full gun, do this. And then uh, it, when you hit the gun, you want 20, 25 to 30 pounds, and I'm right there. And so I'm going to call that good. Now here are the ra mixing ratios for the uh, sealer. And I've got this ready to go. My mask, I already preset that, got my filter, got my mixing cup, which I have a 20 ounce, I've got a 20 ounce cup on my paint gun. So if you go across the, to the column four to one, I'll fill it all the way up to six, and then I'll take this other stuff and I'll fill it to the next six, and that gives me a four to one. I'll pour the, this through the filter and then I will mix it up and dump it in a gun and hopefully make something happen. So I'll go ahead and finish the setup. I'll get the camera on and wish me luck. It's done. Um, I learned a whole lot in 30 minutes. I learned uh, that I was using the gun wrong. I learned that I am nowhere near sanding and doing work on this. I learned that this heater setup that's still running right now worked fa absolutely fantastic. And I learned that you can make one hell of a mess <laughs> with this and I'm gonna keep that in mind next time I do this. Okay, this, this worked fantastic. It is 42 degrees outside. It's lightly raining and it is, According to my thermometer show back there, 70.5 and slowly warming up. It's keeping this place reasonable. I've got air going out and the whole entire time I was painting and never got really cloudy or foggy in here. And let's see the uh, 70.1 degrees on the sheet metal. Okay, now the spray gun. I went on Paint Society's uh, YouTube channel. They got a couple really good videos about how to set this up. I did what he said and it worked. It, I actually had the, uh, the pattern sideways and so up and down. Once I figured that out, I twisted it. I had to learn a lot. You, he says you gotta stay about that far above the metal and do overlapping and he's not kidding. And uh, another thing I was doing wrong is I'm used to spray, spray cans, right? And so if you just want a little bit, you just, ch -ch -ch, uh uh, you've gotta grab it down the entire time and I and I kept catching myself doing that and I kept okay back on it and I still kept doing that so no matter what you've got to grab it the entire way cleaning that was was pretty easy now let's look at the car itself well I wasn't expecting a fantastic looking paint job because this is just sealer but you know this is kind of a good practice I was able to figure out my flow a lot better and I learned that this is not nearly enough lighting. Um, I should have set up some shop lights in the corners of these posts, um, be able to see what I missed. I ended up going back over it quite a bit of time, so I might have some funny streaking on the roof. But once again, not a final paint job, don't care. But when I actually do a paint job, I am not doing it on the lift. 
this stuff was just way too much in the way. You definitely need more room and you definitely need more light. So some of my bodywork came out okay. This part was, you know, there's a patch panel in there. It was really wavy. I ended up going over the whole bunch. And this, I mean, there's still a little bit more needs to be done, but generally it's not that bad. I'm kind of kind of happy about that. I got to do a little sanding there. This type of stuff, I did no work on at all. This is where the emblems were, and I welded that in and just flat disc it down and did nothing and sprayed it. Not too bad, but you can kind of see, see these little pits? That's from, that's just chips that I just never sanded out. So that's on me, and I didn't really notice that until you get paint on it. Plus, I got a little bit of a dent there. Got a couple of slight dents maybe up on the hood. I still got that, looks like it'd be like a bullet hole back there, but just... If you can see that, oops, I didn't touch that. But it's just ripply. It's just not a good sanding job. But now that I know, I don't know if I'd build primer will fix that or not. I'll have to look into that. This is where the old vinyl top trim was. And maybe you can see there, it just, I did no prep work here either. I just, there was these little clips that stick up. I took a flat disc to them. That's it. I don't know if high build primer will fix that or not, but this needs to be better sanded. My fix back here actually turned out pretty darn good. The rest of this, this is where that uh, old trim ran, but that's not too shabby. This not too bad. And kind of hard to see here without a good light, but this not too, not too bad. I mean, it's not perfect by any means. I gotta do a little work here, but I don't think if you knew that there was a big dent in the hole there, you would never know. Uh, same, Quarter panel back here, you know, I just did the quick patch. I probably can't see that, but it's definitely a little ripply. This story isn't over. But the rest of this, not too bad. You know, this is more paint chips. I just never sanded it, sand it down correctly. This obviously needs a lot of work up here. This is where I actually welded it in the uh, new metal. That's got to be cleaned up. I really couldn't see that before, but I definitely can now. I don't think high build primer is going to fix that. But the rest of this... Oh, not too, not too shabby. I think it turned out okay. So I'm leaving town for work, of course, super early in the morning. This is for my old job. It's my last hurrah. I'm going to be gone for a week, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to uh, put trim, bumpers. I'm not going to get too crazy about it, put the back seat in it. I'm going to put a lot of the trim just right back on the car because I don't like piling it in the trunk because it just bounces around back there, and you know stuff gets thrown on it. I'm not going to put all the trim, but like windshield, rear window. I'm going to put the grill bumpers back in. I'm not putting on the, the door panels or a lot of interior work or any of that kind of stuff. But just make it so it's um, uh, transportable might be the way. Plus, I got a huge mess here in the garage. But really, I'm glad I did this. Um, I'm not worried about a little bit of rain getting on the car. And I can definitely put this on the back burner while I move to Texas. So I'm going to end this video here and hopefully within a couple months I can start this project up again because the way the price differences are from western Washington to uh, Fort Worth, Dallas area, I might get myself into a shop. I'm hoping. But I hope you uh, guys enjoyed this as I did this the very first time and I didn't mess it up too bad. <laughs> Take care.